have recently failed myself, my spouse, my marriage by committing financial infidelity for the third time. Mm. And I feel like I have broken <laughs> my husband into pieces. What's going on? This is John with the Dr. John Deloney Show. I'm so grateful that you are joined us. That you are are joined us. You have joined us. That you have joined us. This is a linguist show about how to pronounce words. This is the Dr. John Deloney Show, a show about your mental health, a show about relationships, uh, work stuff, school stuff, whatever you got going on in your life. I'm here to walk alongside you, and we will figure out what we can do next, what you can do next in your life. The purpose of this show is very simple. Um, I want to take years of experience, years of academic training, years of sitting in the trenches with people and provide clear, direct, simple, unfiltered ways that people, regular folks who are just trying to do their life, just like me, just like a dad and a husband trying to figure it out, a homeowner and a neighbor and someone who sends my kids to public school. We're just trying to figure it out. I want to provide a clear path forward in this new third way, because when we look this way and we look that way, it's chaos chaos, chaos. And I'm done with it. I'm done with it. I'm getting out of the aquarium. I'm, I'm getting, I'm unplugging from the matrix. And so this show is about finding a new third way, a new third way to live, to be well, to be whole, to interact, to find joy and peace again, to actually sleep all night, actually drink coffee in the morning just because I want to, not because I have to. Whew. It's about changing everything sometimes. And sometimes it's just about making a few tweaks, but my promise is I'm going to tell you the truth. Even when I don't know, I'll say, I don't know. And I'm going to walk alongside you and we're going to figure it out. If you want to be on the show, give me a buzz at 1-844-693-3291. That's 1-844-693-3291. Or go to johndeloney.com slash ask, A-S-K. And please send these shows to everyone that you know. Anyone you think would benefit from it. If you think, man, somebody needs this a, a word here or some insights here. Or my friend's been asking about this or about ADHD or narcissism or what they can do with their marriage or whatever's going on. Send these shows to everybody you know, and please just take 30 seconds and give us a like, a five-star review, um, or a just hit the subscribe button. It means the world. All right, let's go out to Dana in Salt Lake City. What's up, Dana in the Utes? How we doing? Doing well, thank you. How are you? I'm, dude, we're just having a party. Having a party. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so what's up? How can I help? Okay, I am... Um... Hey, do, do me a hey Dana, do me a favor. Talk directly into your phone for me, okay? Okay, I am. Okay, all right. Can great. you hear me better? Yes, a little bit better. There you go. Go for it. I am a sixty-three-year-old grandmother. I've been divorced three times. I've had several relationships since my last divorce, but it have not worked out. Um, I cannot keep even friends. Although my children, I have five children, I get along great with them. They're adult children. Uh, my grandchildren, I get along with great. It's the personal relationships that I have with uh, marriages, um, with try, uh, trying to find the, the right man. I don't know if, if I am a narcissist. Um, I don't believe that I am, but I am afraid that I might be. I, I cannot keep even friendships. I am sad that I can't do that right now, that I've been trying to get back with even my best friend that I've had for years that does not want anything to do with me. What, what's um, been the catalyst for, number one, thank you for your vulnerability. Like what you're okay. saying is hard to say out loud, right? Oh, very much so. Um, when we get married, we, at some level, deep in our bones, say this is forever. And you said that three times. And yes. we think that, good grief, when we were 12 or we were, no, before that, we were four, we could barely remember to go to the bathroom, but we can always have friends. And then when we're adults, we th there's an extra sense of shame and what a loser, right? So it's a bold, brave step to say that out loud. So I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you for saying that out loud. Let's go, um, let's, let's divide these up. What happened in your marriages? If, if you were to look at all three of them and say, here's a common denominator across all three, what would that be? Um, the common denominator would be me as a, 
that's what I've always figured. It's it's me. I had to kind of look and say, you know, yeah, it's me. So what is the issue? I think that it is when things start going wrong and I try to voice my opinion or I, I say something, but if I don't agree with you, um, I get so upset. Why? Why? What? What happened in your life that made you circle the wagons on this idea that if you're wrong, you're worthless? I don't know. I it came from somewhere. I know. It, it had to have been. I, I had a great childhood. So I, I, I don't know. I, uh, I, the only thing in my childhood I could remember, I came from a very religious family. I wanted out of the house fast because I did not want want that lifestyle. Hold on. I'm going to stop uh, you right there. You did not have a great childhood then. Okay. There you go. True. Because yeah. I, I often take other ops, the opposite call. How do I get my kid out of here? And to quote my friend, Dr. Henry Cloud, I've got to often teach parents how to give their kids problems like rent and bills because their house are, is their life is so great at home that they don't want to leave both relationally and with needs being met. Yours was the opposite. You couldn't wait to go. Correct. So carrying around this narrative that everything was great and wonderful and grand is not true. Somewhere Correct. along the way, being wrong was dangerous. Somewhere along the way, somebody took away your um, power. And what I mean by that is um, it could be as simple as you didn't want to hug every one of those uncles and you had to line up and hug them all and they'd kiss you on the mouth and on the ear when you were a little girl and you didn't want to and you squirmed and you tightened up your body and you got in trouble for it, not them. And you learned at a young age that what you want does not matter. What matters is that mom and dad look good in this little system that we're in. And Dana, I'm just making this up. Am I close or not? You're very close. Okay. I, I rebelled at a very young age just to, yeah. And to often be. we, we, we look at, oh man, we look at children, especially younger children that quote unquote rebel and we want to beat them down and blame them. Instead of looking at their little bodies that are not developed yet and say, what about this system that we have dropped this child into is so sick that this child's body is saying, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Wow. And yeah, now I, you're 63. And for yep. 35 years, you're willing to lose it all for being right. Correct. For quote unquote winning. Congratulations. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Not working for me. No, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, <laughs> I think the fact that you're asking this question would suggest um, just off the top that you're not a narcissist, but let's run down the list just for fun. Do you okay. believe the world is, was like, was designed for you? That ultimately, people, you are mostly smarter than everybody that you are around. You're probably more or less more beautiful than other people. Um, one day, you're going to be super more successful than everybody around you. Is that is that how you see the world? No. Do people in the world exist for your pleasure? No. What are you entitled to? Besides being right. Nothing really. I can't. I would. That, no entitlements. Seriously. Let, let me ask you this: When when you when one of your husbands was to say, "We're not making out enough," and you felt that rage, I I call it that inner thermometer just shoots up, right, yeah. and it explodes out the top, and yeah. you point at him and say, "How dare you!" We make out all the time and this and this and this. Yes. Do you feel me. like he was stupider than you? Or do you feel like he was being honest and you were having to defend yourself? Um, never thought any of them were stupider than me. I just felt like they were... What's the... How, picking on me? Like they were trying to... Yeah, but it was it was me. You're 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 bad. You're you're not doing this. You're not doing that. 
you're not giving me what I need. So here I am. So then I feel like I have to defend myself. And I, um, so the, the, your body has some pretty simplistic, just pretty simple responses to trauma. Correct. It'll, it'll run. It'll turn and pick up a stick and fight. And it's, it's amazing. I've got a gigantic 13 year old son who's very, very strong. And we wrestle, we've got, we got wrestling mats upstairs. We, we wrestle, <laughs> he's very strong, but when it comes down to like confrontation, yes, his natural inclination, he's very, very, very fast. He will take off. He leans away. My seven year old yeah. daughter, who's 0.3 pounds, I could sneeze and knock her over. If yeah. we get sideways, she squares up and gets ready to throw down. So there's nothing wow. about gender. There's nothing about strength. There's nothing about size. It's just how bodies respond. And for some reason, your body um, responds to somebody challenging you as an act of war. Yes. My last husband said I could beat him up with my mouth. <laughs> And what I want to ask you is, what has that got you? Nothing. It's it's gotten me to divorce. I it's. Are you done with it? I am so done with it. I'm in a relationship now and trying so hard to make this work. Okay, the, I'm going to tell you right now. You're you're already doomed to fail again. Oh, oh. here's here's why. Here's why. You're trying to constrict it even tighter and tighter and tighter until it snaps. Oh, wow. What I want you to do is to open your hands completely and just freaking let go, Dana. Let go. The more you have tried over the course of your life to not screw something up, the tighter and tighter it has become. And then when he inevitably says something that's going to be of confrontation. Why do you put the trash in? Did you not did you not get this thing? Why didn't you pick me up when you said you were going to be there? There's no margin. It just goes. Kabam! It snaps. It's over. I'm out. Bye. Yep. That is, that's me. That's so, it. So let's do the exact opposite. Okay. Here's what I mean. When you feel your body setting off again, and you've done this long enough now, and actually you are super, just so you know, you are... 20 counseling sessions down the road. Have you been to therapy before? Yes. Okay. You're, you're, you're way down the road, which is impressive. It's really incredible. So I want to tell you, you're right at the door here. Okay. I want okay. you to carry around a little journal with you. Okay. And don't even use your notes app. Cause I want you to take the time, the kinetic time to write this thing down. Okay. All right. And when you feel your body starting to set off, I want you to hold your breath, hold it. For one, two, three seconds, and remember that knucklehead on some podcast you talked to one day. <laughs> okay? Okay. And all I want you to do is to look at the person you're about to explode on and say, I need three minutes. I need five minutes. And then I want you to walk outside, and I want you to write down what you were about to say to that person. Write it down in your journal. Okay. Okay? All right. Is that cool? That's way cool, yes. And... Next, anytime y'all are about to get into a discussion, I want you to, about a thing, whatever the thing is, I want y'all to sit on the same side of the table and take a little note card and put in the middle of the table thing that we're talking about. That way, all the energy and frustration and rage and anger, all those things that come up are going to go to this thing, not to you and not to back to him. Wow. Remember this in your soul. If you win and he loses, you both lose. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, that's so oh, great. Thank if you. he wins and you lose, you both lose. Right? So the goal here is to, what, what is the thing that is going to push our relationship a little bit further down the road? Just, just a couple of inches. And then a couple inches beyond that. And then a couple inches beyond that. Right? Yeah. Right. Wow. But here's your new identity, okay? Okay. I want you to say these words out loud. I'm Dana, and I no longer go to... No, uh, let's, let's don't even do that. I'm Dana, 
and I'm a person who seeks peace. I'm Dana. I'm a person who seeks peace. I'm Dana. I don't fight anymore. I'm Dana. I don't fight anymore. I'm Dana, and I will love you till the end of time. I'm Dana, and I will love you till the end of time. And now what we're going to do is we're going to work in service of those three identities. We're just going to work backwards on it. What do I have okay. to do way upstream so that I can love you till the end of time? That means I got to, like when you are with this person, say, it's pretty obvious that I can, uh, <laughs> I, I, I have a hurricane inside of me that can be unleashed on from time to time. <laughs> and so I want to try to do something different now that I'm 63. Yeah. When I feel the hurricane coming, I want to step away. So I want you to know that I love you. I'm in. I like dating you. And I want to protect you and this relationship and myself. And so sometimes I'm going to say, I need five minutes. It's what this some moron uh, podcaster told me. I need five minutes. And then I'm going to write it down and then I'm going to come back in. And I might write something down on a note card and put it in the uh, middle of our table. And you're going to think, you're dating a crazy person. But we are getting on the road to being well because I'm not fighting you anymore. I'm seeking peace. I'm seeking peace. And I'm going to seek peace in a relationship. I, I've got high hopes for you, Dana. If you commit, I'm never going to war again. I'm done going to war. And once I take war off the table, once I take rage off the table, once I take walking away off the table, once I take indignation off the table, then it leaves only this many other options like discussions and communication. And I need to go for a walk. And let's go talk to a counselor about this. Let's call my sister and because she can actually hear me. Or maybe you call your friends and you say, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I treated you like the demons that have been hounding me since I was a little girl. And I'm sorry. Give me another shot. 63 years old, it's never too late to turn it all around. I'm so grateful for you, Dana. Keep me updated on your journey. We'll be right back. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Folks, take a minute to think about how much time you spend on yourself. It's easy to get caught up in what people need from you and want from you and never think about what you need. And then you end up too stretched out, burned out, all of the madness of our current world resting on your shoulders. Look, sometimes I put my head down to work and then realize I haven't had a meaningful conversation with my wife and kids all day. I get focused on what I'm doing and I'm running and running and running and I don't know how to come back. And therapy is a great way to learn new skills that make you the best version of yourself. They help you set boundaries and still have energy left to help others without leaving yourself behind. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's totally online to fit into your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So find more balance. Find wellness with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Deloney today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Deloney. All right, we're back. Let's go to Lynn in Orlando, Florida. What's up, Lynn? Hi, how are you, Dr. Deloney? Partying. What are you up to? <laughs> I'm just sitting down here in sunny Orlando. <laughs> well, just kick us while we're done. Actually, it's nice in Nashville today, so haha. There you go. Beautiful. Right, what's up? <laughs> uh, well, um, my call today is really just based on um, I have an adult daughter um, who in the past has been a little deceptive. Um, Say that, in, say that again. She's been, she's been what? A bit deceptive. Um, like, how, how long? I guess I don't like to say, I don't like to say lying, but you know, just, um, <laughs> not being completely honest with my husband and I. Okay. Can I stop? Can I stop you right there? I, I have a bad habit sure. of interrupting. I know. I just love to get the data points. That's really okay. quick. Um, sure. how long? Um, well, she's 25 now and this is probably when she went off to school when she was about 18 or 19 mm -hmm. to 19. And where in the world did she learn to not say exactly what it is, but to kind of use other words that kind of were skirted around it a little bit? That's me joking right now. Uh, Cause you're like, I don't want to call uh, her a liar. I just want to call her deceptive. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds less, of I guess, I, you know, yeah, so, it sounds nicer. <laughs> in her 18 year old mind, 
Like, yeah. I wasn't hammered. I had like two drinks. No. I had two drinks. <laughs> I'm not, I wasn't, we, didn't, we weren't sleeping together, mom. I just stayed too late. Yeah. So she, so I just want to point that out. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. So, well, I mean, it was more or less just like, um, I guess a year of schooling. Um, she said she was in class and she was not. Mm-hmm. Um, she was, uh, I guess for, for her words to, you know, to us was that she had this paralyzing anxiety and couldn't show up in class. So, uh, what about that? Do you not believe? Because you don't believe her. I can tell in your voice you don't believe her. I, I. It's okay I if you do don't. Just tell me. Her. Um, I mean, I do believe her. Um, just based on I've had um, prior to that, she did have an episode when she was younger, like where she did cutting. Mm-hmm. Um, not, not horrible. I mean, well, like I guess it's not good or bad, but I mean, she did do it. She didn't tell us about it, but I did see it because, um, you know, I'm pretty observant. I have there's four of them, so. Um, I was, you know, anyway, so I did notice that she was doing that, um, brought it up to her because I saw it. Um, she was very forthcoming and I, you know, she, I took her to see, um, a therapist and, um, I guess we, I thought we had moved on. I didn't see any more indication of that. She was at the point, you know, at that time I thought she was being very open. Um, but then, um, anyway, so moving forward, she did go to, we thought she wanted to go to school um, we, you know, prepared for her to do that as parents do. And, uh, lo and behold, when, you know, we needed verification that she had been in school, she had to come clean. So she didn't do it willingly. She just did it because it was basically by default. Um, so coming to the present day, um, she, uh, was living in Tallahassee still, um, met a guy while she was there. And they were in a relationship for um, quite some time. Um, and just recently, she told us um, some pretty troubling news, uh, which is quite personal, but um, for the sake of just, it was not good. And, but she was, the whole time she was still lying to us about like what she was doing and what her life was all about. So we were, I, I guess, painstakingly, we were proud of her because, you know, from what she um what she was doing while she was in school, um, you know, we were back on that trust train again, trying to um, trust her again. And then lo and behold, like within the, like the last couple of months, um, you know, had that kind of news. Um, But so now she's like, she got out of it. She was with a boy. She was with the boyfriend and they broke up. Um, She made some really, really bad financial uh, decisions with him. very expensive financial decisions. And so she's no longer with him, but now she's with, um, a new boyfriend and, um, she's doing a lot of behavior. Um, like I said, she's, you know, smoking daily. She's drinking more than she has ever. She's never been a big drinker, um, that I know of. Um, and I'm just concerned with her current state. How old is she, Lynn? She's 25. And you have four other kids. What, where does she fall? What order? She's the old, oldest. The oldest. And tell me about dad. Um, like just like who he is or yep. what kind of father he is or, okay. So he, uh, I mean, she's a lot like him. So I guess she just, you know, she's kind of one of tell those. Tell me about that, him. Okay, so he doesn't like to, he's kind of likes to live in oblivion. Like if there's, you know, he, there's a lot of issues that he has, but he likes to push them underneath the carpet. Um, doesn't such like as, to really deal with a whole lot. Such as? Um, maybe. You've spent the last anger. 25 years of your relationship covering up for this dude. I'm asking you, just tell me about him. Um, I, I guess not emotionally available. Okay. But very sensitive, like Cor- sensitive yes, to, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, so I wrote down two words when you started talking. Mm-hmm. The two words are connection and pressure. The behaviors you're describing with your daughter, are behaviors I've seen thousand times working with college students for two decades. Here's mm-hmm. what it is: it is a young child screaming. For the two adults in their li- in her life, not to um, 
play with, although that's a part of, but to connect. Do you see me? And a dysregulated child that is not fully plugged in will try to plug into a hundred different things. And when you're trying to plug in, that pressure will build and build and build. And I can control it sometimes through eating or not eating. I can control it through cutting. I can control it through athletic achievement. I can control it even through straight A's. Mm -hmm. It ultimately manifests itself into high, high anxiety. And Mm -hmm. what makes anxiety go away? Weed, alcohol, Percocet. It stops it for a while until it kills you. Mm -hmm. Right. Right? Buying things. What else? Intimate relationships. Mm -hmm. So all of the behavior, I mean, it's just she's following a track. The second thing is, is the word sensitive, it has such a negative connotation in our culture, which I just hate. I am extra Mm -hmm. sensitive to certain things. All of Mm -hmm. us are. Some people are extra sensitive to how much jalapenos they can have in their queso. Some are extra sensitive to they walk into a room and can just feel something's off. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a weird, I can walk up to somebody and look at them and say, you're not okay. You don't have to talk to me about it, but I want you to know that I see you and I care about you. And just I'll walk away. Nine times out of 10, that person will reach out and be like, I don't know who you are, you weird sorcerer. But there's a sensitivity, okay? Mm -hmm. Right. When you have an older child who is born highly sensitive and then they get the weight of the family put on them because dad's unavailable. It's trying to hold, like, just think about holding, like, workout plates above your head and your arms start shaking and shaking and shaking. And so the question is, as a 25-year-old, isn't here's what I'm going to tell you. She doesn't need any more advice. She doesn't need any more threats or any more. If you just do this is then this, then this is because there's been a continual, my relationship to you, her, her dad's relationship to her, um, has been contingent on performance. If she doesn't do a thing or she does do a thing, then you get us, you get our money, our support, our love, a seat at our table. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? I do. And so the only way through it, is a complete and utter reversal of how y'all have done it. And if dad won't be involved, dad's not going to be involved, but she's going to have to hear you say those words. Dad didn't so plug if he's, it. Go ahead. He's available, but I mean, like he, like, I don't know how, like he's I know. Present, he's present, but not available, which I think is actually more caustic to a kid. Okay. okay. An absent father, a father who moves away. I mean, you can look at the data. It's, it's really damaging. Mm-hmm. But a dad who sits on the couch and stares off into space or a dad who stares at his laptop makes a kid insane because the kid is wondering what is so great because it's, it's all relationship for a child. That's how they see the world. And so they want right. to know what is so appealing and beautiful and wonderful about that laptop that they don't have. Mm-hmm. And you take a sensitive, what is so important about that client? Why is that client so much more beautiful than me, dad? And she will try to answer that question forever and ever and ever. And when you're 12, you, you don't have any resources to answer questions. And it just bottles and traps and traps and traps and traps. And that's when cutting goes, whew, it lets some of the steam out. Yeah, that's how she described it. Because, I mean, I did, you know, I mean, I, we actually have a very, I mean, I, I always think, I mean, they're always very forthcoming eventually with me. But it's usually when it's, you know, coming to fruition, like, like they don't have, really have a choice. Um, but you, you, you are, help, co- you're you know? conflating relationship with information. Okay. Y'all get, y'all, y'all pass information back and forth to each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just, I feel like with this, there's like, because I feel like I just don't really know how to take, like with, if she says something or if she tells me that something is her reality or like, this is her situation. I don't know to really trust her because every Why? time that. Why? Why wouldn't you hold her hands and look her down and say, I totally trust you. I'm not going to give you any money. That's not where we're at right now. Right. But I hear you and I'm so heartbroken for you. And you are always welcome at our house. And by oh, Yes. And I believe that they do believe that because we've had that so many times. I know they, they know that they can um, come here and that we're always, you know, here to help them. I mean, um, but as, are, just, are, like, are, I, I don't know what this, you know, she just does stuff and then she just 
like it comes out and you're like, well, why, why, I don't understand why you would do that or why you would think that was okay. Or, you know what I mean? And then, I don't know can how to, you have, can you, if I'm not articulating it correctly, but no, you're, no, you're articulating it great. I'm trying to think okay. of the right way to say it. Um, I just want you to look at your relationship with your oldest daughter, your baby girl. Yeah. And ask if a, a, a relational approach of judgment mm-hmm. at all costs, what has that got you? Mm-hmm. I would suggest trying a path of curiosity and love over judgment. She knows you don't approve of what she's doing. You don't have to keep saying that. Right. What she's desperate for is you to take her out for coffee and say, I've got some things I never told you. Mm-hmm. And you tell her about that boy that was hurt you deeply before you met her dad and how hard it has been to be in a relationship with somebody that you love deeply, but who is emotionally absent. And maybe you didn't cut and maybe you didn't fill in the blank, but you did have some coping strategies because you've made it this far. Mm-hmm. And in some ways you've been a single parent with a guy sitting on the other end of the couch. You know what she's going through. And sometimes when I see something in my son, I know what he's doing because I did the exact thing. I'm over, overzealous about it because I don't want him to hurt like I did. And in the process, I push him away because he doesn't have a context for my pain yet. And so when I say connect... So you're saying that her behavior is like more or less because of the relationship between her, like she has with her dad or... Like, I mean, like, is there, like, what, I don't know, I, I guess. Here, what, what I'm saying is you see the world in cause and effect, either or, this because that. Everything for you mm-hmm. is an algorithm. And I'm telling you, it's way more complex than that. It, mm-hmm. So a thousand different things could have led to this moment. What I'm telling you at this point is it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. What I'm telling you is you have a 25-year-old daughter who is desperate to know her mom and to know that her mom sees her and loves her and trusts her. Mm-hmm. Because you say, my kids know they can come home. Your daughter's behavior over the last five years suggests she doesn't know that. Or she knows she can come home, but it's not worth it. Because we're going to have to do this and have all these lectures and discussions. And why are we doing all these things? And I'm not saying those are all bad. What I'm saying is she needs to know you're a human, not not in a spreadsheet. That doesn't make sense because the, with everything that's, you know, going on or, you know, I mean, I don't make the whole, like, I mean, we, we get together quite frequently, but I don't talk to her about it. I'm, if she brings it up, I may say, well, where are you, you know, with that? Just, you know, do you, are you making any headway, you know, so you can get out of that situation so you can move forward. And she's like, I just don't want to talk about it with you. Right. So I don't know. It's a safety issue. You know what I mean? Like, it's a safety issue. I don't want to just, okay. And I just don't know. In your mind. Does she know that we're available there? In your mind. A conversation means you are supporting her decisions. Holding her hand across the table at a coffee shop and looking her in the eyes and telling her, I've never cut, but I've done this. Okay. I've had to survive too. And I'm, not, I'm telling you that because I've hidden this from you because I want to be the strong one and those days are over now. I love you. I love you too much to let you go through this by yourself. And... No, I'm not going to move my values. My values are here because of what I've experienced. Mm -hmm. But if all we needed was um, for the good life was a textbook, we would just read one. Right. Yeah. But we need a relationship. Mm -hmm. And I, my guess is you and I could talk for another five hours. You've probably had to turn some of that off in your life to survive. And not survive, not to death, but survive sanity-wise. Yes, you're not wrong about that. (laughs) And there's a terrifying fear that if you open that door even a crack to somebody, especially to your daughter, that you will lose control and never be able to close that door back. Am I right? You're not wrong. (laughs) (laughs) You can't even say it. I love it. You can't say the words. You are right. And I was wrong. It makes my heart. (laughs) So good. You pick up on those things. So so listen, listen. Yes. Here's what your daughter knows. Okay. Okay. Can I just, can I just, can I just cut to the chase real direct, but I want to say it. it. That's exactly what I want. I just, you and I are having fun at this point. Okay. But I'm being serious. Yes. Okay. 
your daughter knows you're not telling the truth too. She learned it from you. Okay. She learned that we've got to hide certain things so that we can stay in relationship with people so that we can eat, so we cannot get hurt, so we can stay safe, so that somebody will help us with our tuition because we can't tell the full story. And we learned it from mom because mom had to put part of herself in a closet so that she could survive. And the only way through that is for you to open the closet door and show your daughter a little bit of what's in there. Not all the not guts and gore and all that kind of stuff. Right. But she's got to know her mom knows her. And loves her anyway. And I, if I'm, so here's what I'm telling you. If I'm you, I would sit down and have some sort of conversation about this. I have tried to love you through giving you advice and wisdom for so long. Those days are over. If you ask me, I'm going to tell you, but I'm going to invite you in. I, I, I want you to know there's always a standing offer for my wisdom and my advice for whatever that's worth. Mm -hmm. From this point forward, I want my daughter back. And I'm going to go first. There are some stories about me that you don't know that I want you to know. Okay. I can do that. Can you? Yes, I actually can. I mean, it, it's going to be uncomfortable, but, you know, because you try to be the strong person for your kids. and Sometimes being the strong know. person is comes across as highly inauthentic and deceptive. Or, to say it another way, Sometimes the strongest, most powerful thing you can do is tell somebody, I'm not okay. Literally, like physically speaking, the hardest I've ever been hugged was from an active SEAL. He'd gotten back from deployment, had some challenges, and was hugging me so hard I couldn't breathe. And they were weeping so hard they couldn't breathe. That was strength. That was bravery. That was power. That's what I'm talking about. And that person's a close friend to this day. Your daughter's got all the rules she knows. She's got all the values she knows. And I'm not saying you become a doormat. Not at all. You hold true to your value. But it's time that your daughter got to meet her mom. And it's time you look her in the eye and say, I'm sorry. I didn't know what to do, so I went to rules. I went to regulations. And I pushed you away. I'm sorry. From this point forward, I want my daughter back. Thank you so much for being brave, Lynn. We'll be right back. All right, we are back. Let's go back to Salt Lake City and talk to Megan. What's up, Megan? Hi, Dr. John. Wow, Thanks that's way better. That's fantastic. That's, fa that's awesome. What's okay, up? Good. Um, so I have recently failed myself, my spouse, my marriage by um, committing financial infidelity for the third time. Ooh. And I feel like I have really just broken <laughs> my husband into pieces. And I, I recognize that this is completely my fault. And it's a coping mechanism that I use when I'm in distress and I, I just really need to figure out uh, how to, how to best help the situation and get trust again and, and work towards a better future because he's been um, forgiving enough to give me another chance, even though I don't really deserve that. I feel. Do you believe that? Um, um, or is that just like a thing you I, say? No, I, I do. I, I just have done it too many times and I know that it's so hurtful. Um, it's like he, he even expressed to me, it's like being actually cheated on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the, the and, conversations I've had with folks behind closed doors, it's very, very similar. Just the yeah. devastation of it all. How bad, how bad mm -hmm. is your, um, how bad has it been? Um, so the first two times um, was around fifteen thousand dollars, and we um, paid those off together and and got debt free. And then um, I was doing really well. I was following a budget and and doing other things to help uh, manage stress. And um, 
other things that were going on in my life. We've had a rough couple of years um, these last two years because um, several people in my family passed away, mm. um, including my Jesus. mom. Oh, geez, I'm sorry. Yeah, and um, so I was doing, in my opinion, really well. And um, I didn't know that um, I had some health issues creeping up and had to go off of work for about 12 weeks just because I was in a lot of pain and constant headaches and um, a lot of a lot of problems um, relating to that and didn't work. And I didn't know that my credit card attached to my bank was um, still active. And so I was overdrafting on um, certain things and um, just bills and um, didn't know that that was coming out of the credit card. So that's kind of what started it all. And I didn't want to come clean about that because it's embarrassing. I just wasn't paying attention. And then it became a free for all. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you, um, because even I bet your headaches and autoimmune are stemming from somewhat possibly the same places. I I do know that they um I had a, a brain scan and I have two brain tumors. Oh, you um, do? Okay. All right. Yeah. So are what, what kind of tumors are they? Um one is a, a pituitary adenoma and the other one is a pineocytoma. Okay. I'm waiting to get that one evaluated, but the pituitary is is benign. Okay. So, and what was yeah. the other one? A a pineocytoma it's by the pineal gland. Yeah, yeah. Um I I would have to sit down and look at the architecture of where these things. Uh, a lot of questions here. One yeah. of the questions off the top off the top of my head, like just, so. With with that piece of insight, um, it may be that you've got just some behavioral regulation challenges because of like a legitimate brain disorder. You've got stuff going on in your mind. You've got tumors yeah. in your head, right? And so yeah. um, it might be that you need a healthy dose of grace for yourself and some high restriction, just some big time roadblocks, right? S- similar to yeah. like when my granddad became 85, like he couldn't drive anymore. And <laughs> he's not a bad guy, but he was going to run somebody over. So he yeah. couldn't drive anymore. So <laughs> Um, it had nothing to do with character. It had nothing to do with, it's just like, I can't have debit card anymore. I can't have a credit card. We can't have it. I can't have access to the bank account because I've got tumors on my brain that have some mm-hmm. sort of re- uh, relationship to behavior regulation. That's, that's a thing. That could be it. Mm-hmm. Another question I'd have for you is n- not knowing that, I would be willing to bet that somebody at some point, you have a major major in your bones problem with authority yeah <laughs> where does that come from uh i probably my parents being really strict when i was growing up were they insanely strict um i think most of the problem was being compared uh to my older mm-hmm. sister who has some adhd and and like behavior and not behavior learning problems and being told that I was kind of wasting my potential. And um, every time I would like mess up, I would get um, lectured or get privileges taken away or. So, so let's, let's back out a little yeah. bit. Lectures happen. That's part of life. Privileges getting taken yeah. away. That's part of life. Yeah. If you can honestly look back at your upbringing and interactions with mom and dad, Interactions Mm -hmm. with brothers and sisters. Relationships were contingent on performance. And Mm -hmm. when you didn't perform, then you can't go on the family whatever. Or we're all going to the movie and you got to stay at home. Or Mm -hmm. we're going to do this thing and you have to eat outside. Whatever. It becomes this, to be in here, you've got to dance. Monkey dance. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? And so... Mm -hmm that behavior can get transferred to something as simple as a budget. I'm not doing what you say. I'm not. 
I can mm-hmm. do whatever I freaking want to because I'm an adult. Mm, yeah. And when you, the way you're describing, like, I'm trying to be good, I'm trying to be good, I'm trying to be good, you're not changing your core identity there. You're trying to white knuckle this thing as tough as you can, and you're going to fail every time. And, yeah. and this is the pot exactly. talking to the kettle. It's like, I'm not having candy. I'm not having candy. I'm not eating junk food. I'm not filling the blank. Yes, I am. Because I haven't dealt with the core issues. Mm-hmm. So let's take, let's take, um, let's take brain tumors off the table for a second. Holding, yeah. that might be part of the problem. Okay. Might be a significant mm-hmm. part of the problem. What if you were able to see a budget as one of the greatest gifts you could give to yourself? Or let me say it this way. My friend Sal, um, I've had him on the show several times. He uh, talks about um, diet and exercise with his sh- on his show, on the Mind Pump show. Um, mm-hmm. He says you can't hate your body into shape. You can't yeah. hate the way you look so bad. And that's why you go to the gym because then the gym becomes punishment. And you can only punish yourself so long before you end up at the buffet again. You can only punish and hate yourself so long before I'm just not going to the gym anymore. Because it's a literal beating. Like literally. It's a punishment. When I open my eyes and think, I love myself so much. I'm going to go give myself an hour of movement, exercise, doing hard stuff. I, I'm gonna, I, I give myself an hour. That's how much I love myself. Dude, my gym time goes an hour and 20 minutes. goes an hour. Th- I got to literally leave. My son came down this morning and was like, dad, we got to go. <laughs> because I was, I was, I was giving myself this gift. It wasn't a matter of, I got to go get it done. And I don't always do that, but most of the times it's a gift, right? So it's a matter of changing your perspective from this budget is something that constrains me, doesn't treat me like an adult, tells me I'm stupid Cuts me off from mm-hmm. relationship, just like my, I grew up. Always, it's a comparison thing because if we had this and the neighbors have that and they have this and the Joneses have that, instead of then, do your budget's the greatest gift because your budget's going to help you build wealth over the long term. It's going to keep you safe in the present. And you see what I'm saying? It's just a total reframe. Yeah. And then having like <laughs> sitting down with your husband once a week to talk about where we are financially becomes a gift you give to yourself mm-hmm. or it becomes a more powerful gift than another pair of shoes or another, whatever thing it is that you're buying. Right. Yeah. That would be nice. Have you tried that before? Um, we actually had a meeting, a budget meeting last night, but we've both kind of been sick. So it wasn't <laughs> super productive, but we plan to do it going forward. Can you make those fun? Sure. <laughs> Here's what I mean. I'm thinking of, um, there's families out there, so I'm about to make this weird. Sorry, guys. Like strip budget or um, <laughs> silly budget or joke budget. Is there a way to keep it from becoming another business meeting in the house? But we're going to have a blast. We're yeah. going to be silly and we're going to make it fun. And it's a competition. Who saves? Whoever saves the most gets a $1,000 bonus. Like whatever the thing is. Can we turn it into something that you and your husband can have a blast doing? That you look forward to it? Yeah, we can totally do that. Because here's what I want to do. I want to change the entire ethos around this thing. It's a gift that you are giving yourself. Mm -hmm. And with that gift comes high accountability. So I wanted to pretend at this point um, you are struggling with alcoholism. Okay? You're an alcoholic. Okay. And okay. it would be foolish of me to tell an alcoholic, just, just think of a drink as like a gift to yourself, not <laughs> as something you're right. That would be insane. Yeah. Um, so I think for a season, it would be wise to disconnect yourself from things. Okay. To have your husband change the Amazon prime account to mm-hmm. change the bank codes to take your, and I'm going to be honest with you. There was a season I gave my debit card to my wife. Uh-huh. I gave myself an allowance. We did it together, but I simply could not stop purchasing things. I grew up with a lot of money insecurity. When I started getting jobs, it was this compulsion I had. 
and I've got mm-hmm. a bad, bad problem with authority. It's tough. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's my body goes to, as soon as it feels a boundary, it, it feels a need to go hit it for no reason. Like I just need to see if this thing holds. Hate boundaries, hate them. And it wasn't until my wife said, you scare me. <laughs> and that, I mean, that was it. I don't want to scare you anymore. And that means I've got to put this thing down because right now I don't have control over it. Mm, yeah. See what I'm saying? So it's, what I'm telling you is both yeah. and. You're going to work on your identity. You're going to work on what this does for us. And we're going to work on the trust rebuild, which is I'm taking my ability to buy things away. Here's what this is going to look like in real life, Megan. It's going to be the worst. Uh-huh. Every time you feel that sense of rage or entitlement or I'm a grown up and I, I want you to write that down. Okay. I'm feeling like I'm a child again. Mm. And then you can look at this and say, and I'm, cha- I'm, I'm, I'm strengthening new muscles. I'm changing my family tree here. And that tree starts one decision at a time. And it's going to be uncomfortable. Listen to me. It's going to be the worst. You're going to drive up to fill your car up with gas and you are not going to have cash in your wallet. <laughs> and you're going to have to leave. Or worse, you're going to have to call your husband to come get you. And you mm-hmm. are going to be out of your mind. And then the next time you won't forget cash. Right. <laughs> right? Yeah. This is the same as if somebody cheated on somebody. I always tell the person who got cheated on, you, you get to lay the ground rules. For trust rebuild. You want to see all the, all the email accounts? Great. You want to see all the text messages every night? Great. You're going to do a spot check on the phone? Great. Whatever you got to do, and then I'm going to look at the person who did the cheating and say, are you all in? Mm-hmm. And I'll ask you, Megan, are you all in? 110%. Yes. Okay. From today forward, will you ever cheat with money again? No. Will you commit with all of your guts to letting go yes. of this problem with authority? Yes. Money is just an extension. Okay. I want you to, last little homework assignment. You ready? Yeah. Tonight, I want you to get a stop by Home Depot or something on the way home from work. And I want you to buy a cinder block, just one. It'd be like five or six bucks. Okay. And when you get home, I want you to take out a piece of duct tape or masking tape and put it on there. And I want you to write mm-hmm. a short little note to your mom and dad about what they, things they used to say to you. One or two things of the way they treated you. Mm-hmm. And then I want you to go out in the backyard. I want you to carry it around. Mm. I want you to walk around your backyard carrying it and it's going to get real, real heavy. Think about some yeah. of those things that made you so mad when you were a kid. Couldn't wait to get out of there. The thing your mm-hmm. mom said at your wedding. The thing your dad did right before you got engaged, all that stuff. Yeah. And when you can't carry that brick anymore, I want you to go to the corner of your backyard and just set it down. When you set it down, I want you to tear that piece of tape off and you want you to look at that thing and say, I'm not picking you up again. I'm done with those old stories. I'm writing new ones. Wow. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And every time... It sounds simple, but every time you start to pick something up, you can think you'll have a, you'll have a moment, kind of like a funeral. You'll be able to point to your backyard and say, nope, I set this one down. My dad doesn't get a vote anymore. My mom doesn't get a vote anymore. Nobody gets a vote anymore except me and my husband moving forward. And your friends are going to tell you, oh my gosh, he took away your debit card. He's the worst. He, no, 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 no. I, I, I set it down. I gave it up because I'm building new muscles now. I'm working on new things. I don't shop online anymore because my marriage is more important than that, than my convenience. My husband does the shopping now because he loves uh, our marriage more than video game time. Whatever y'all got to do to make it work. But let's change. Let's set down that stuff you've been carrying for so long. Stop. Let's just stop carrying. Let's build something entirely new. Something entirely new. So grateful for the call, Megan. We'll be right back. It seems so easy, but most of us way undervalue real, genuine relationships. Our friendships, our marriages. We don't know what we're doing, and instead of diving into the mess... 
We accept shallowness and distraction and we wallpaper over our loneliness. So let me say this boldly. You cannot be well alone. You've got to get connected to real life people and have deep, powerful relationships. I'm talking about relationships where you can be honest, where you can open up, where you can share hard things and you each know that you'll still show up for each other. And in my new book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future, we'll walk through a not so complicated approach to relationships, mental health and wellness and getting connected is a key part of that. That's why you'll learn shallowness and loneliness are so dangerous. And more importantly, you'll learn how to create meaningful relationships in your life moving forward. There is no good app to help adults find friendships, but this book can help. Go to johndeloney.com to take the next step towards wellness. That's own your past, change your future at johndeloney.com. All right, as we wrap up today's show, one of my favorite songs in the world from one of my favorite bands in the world. This is The Killers, Mr. Brightside, and it goes like this. Coming out of my cage and I'm doing just fine. I gotta be down because I want it all. And it started out with a kiss. How did it end up like this? It was only a kiss. And now I'm falling asleep and she's calling a cab and he's having a smoke and she's taking a drag and they're going to bed and my stomach is sick and it's all in my head. But she touches his chest now and he takes off her dress now. So let me go. And I just can't look and it's killing me and they're taking control. Jealousy turning saints into the sea, swimming through sick lullabies, choking on your alibis. But it's just the price I pay, and destiny's calling me to open up my eager eyes. Because I'm Mr. Right Side. Love you guys. Stay in school. Don't do drugs. Peace.